Before we start this next lesson, I want to show you how to restore the default preferences in Adobe Illustrator on a Macintosh. If you are using an uh, operating system before Lion, uh, you can simply go to the Go menu and your library will be listed right in here. If, however, you have Lion or Mountain Lion, you will notice that the library has mysteriously disappeared. Uh, it's still there, it's just not by default visible. And if you would like to see it, hold down your Option key and the library pops back into view looking just like it always did. If you go to the library, and I'm going to go to my column view here, you go down to Preferences in here. And if you look through here, if you have Illustrator CS6, the preferences will be listed. Uh, here it is, Illustrator CS6 Settings, English, US. And uh, just go to Adobe Illustrator Preferences, choose that, and delete that file. Just move it to the trash. Then quit Illustrator and relaunch Illustrator and a new preferences file will be created that will be default so that all of your tools will work the way that they are going to work um, in the tutorial. In this lesson, we're going to create a flower pot and some flower stems. Uh, we're in Artboard 5, flower pot stems of the document Art 186 Shape Tools. And we're going to be working with the rounded rectangle tool, which is kind of a hybrid between the rectangle tool and the ellipse tool. We started our crosshairs and draw down. Should be able to match our shape pretty um, easily. We zero in on the bottom here. We can kind of see what has been done for us. Clicking off to deselect. If I click with my direct selection tool, I can see that some instead of a corner here, I have two points and some control handles. So I could actually edit this corner if I wanted to. Uh, I could do all kinds of things. I don't want to do those two things right now. But you can kind of see how that works. Now if I click off and click on and just select these two points, I'm just going to use my arrow keys, my right arrow key, to move them in. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I like using the arrow keys because it allows me to do this in a uniform way and uh, that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to go back to my down, uh, my uh, rounded rectangle tool and I'm going to draw this here. If I want to uh, move it while I'm drawing, I can just hold down my space bar. And before I release my mouse button, if I want to increase the radius of the um, corners, I can hit my up arrow key, and you can kind of see how that's working. Or if I want to decrease the radius, I can hit my down arrow key. That's handy. That's fine. It doesn't have to be exactly like the uh, template. Now, if I go to my selection tool and I select this and this, because I have two shapes selected, I get my align buttons up here in my control panel. And I want to make sure that this is set aligned to selection, which is the default. And if I click here, horizontal align center, it will bring those together, which is just what I wanted. So I can pull this over here. I've got a nice looking uh, flower pot there. I can uh, choose my fill. Maybe get rid of my stroke. And that looks pretty good. Next, I would like to draw my stems and leaves. <clears throat> so I'm going to go back to the Arc tool, which you used in a previous lesson. And uh, right now I see I have a white fill and a black stroke. I'm going to change this to no fill. 
and I'll go up here and do this and I'm going to make this stroke a nice rich green. One point is a little bit narrow. <clears throat> a point is an element of typographic measurement, a unit of typographic measurement, and there are 72 points in an inch. So that's one seventy-second of an inch. That's very small. So I'm going to increase it to maybe four points. So I have no fill and a green stroke. And when I go to my arc tool here, I can start to draw. Whoops. It went the opposite way I want. So I simply hit the F key and that flips my arc. That looks good. I'm going to draw another one here two very excellent looking stems. If I uh, zero in on them here, I'll notice that the edge, the ends of the stems look a little harsh. They just kind of cut off. And so I'm going to select both of those and go to my stroke panel and choose right here, round cap. And that just made a nice little round cap for my strokes. So that's good. I'm pretty happy with those strokes. Now I'm going to hold down my uh, space bar and just move over here. And uh, with the same settings, I'm going to go back to my arc tool. I'm going to draw two little arcs that will create my leaves. <clears throat> and um, the settings remained as what I created before, so I have the nice rounded ends. And what I'm going to do now is use one of the new tools in Illustrator CS6, the Width tool, right over here. This is a totally cool tool because it allows us to have variable width on a stroke. And this is a completely new capability. You can set as many of these width points as you want on a stroke and it can really make a nice organic appearance. Uh, one thing that is very cool is if you get a width profile that you like, you can actually go up to the top here of your control panel to the variable width profile and right down here you can add two profiles and I can give it a name in this case leafy oh I guess I must have done this before so let's go leaves okay and uh, that's kind of cool because now if I want to draw another line at some point um, let me just uh, increase the weight of the stroke to four point and then apply my leafy profile or my leaves profile and you'll see that it's actually applying it from the bottom to the top. So um, <clears throat> this is an interesting thing that even though this line and this line look exactly the same to us, Illustrator remembers which direction I drew them in. So if I apply width profile it recalls whether I drew it from top to bottom or bottom to top. So this is kind of interesting and it's just something you sort of have to keep track of. And of course if I increase the weight it uh, it changes the way the profile is applied. So I'm just gonna get rid of these. And let's go back to looking at our whole artboard. And you can see now that I've got all of the ingredients if I go back and remember my flower that I drew in the last lessons. But now I've got all the ingredients to create a flower pot with leaves and flowers. And what I recommend that you do is take the um, various elements you've created and go to the tryout space, uh, which is here, and copy and paste them and see if you can create a composition out of what you've done. We have one more lesson, which is to create a vase, and I'm going to give you a little preview of that over here. And that will be our next tutorial in case you want to include a vase for your flowers.